part of the beauty of teen court is it truly is uh, a jury of your peers. And if you've got a young person in front of a, an adult court, it's not. The difference with a restorative justice process or approach, philosophy, is that we want you, we love you, and we want you here. And we want to figure out how to make it work. Besides the fact that he was a store owner and I was an offender, the fact that he had a life just as much as I did. One challenge that hasn't offered up much good news is the whole area of crime and corrections in our communities. Tonight we'll explore a very bright exception. Will the bailiff please call the first case? When kids are judged by their peers, I think there's a different level of accountability that they hold themselves to. You sit in the jury box, you ask the question to the respondent, and you get to kind of know them. Each member of the jury is now instructed to give his or her full attention to this case. Remember that you're not here to determine guilt or innocence. Your sole duty is to determine what consequences are fair and appropriate for the defendant's illegal conduct. There was a girl who went in and stole some grocery items and just walked straight through. And so it's just amazing to me to see that. So when you turned around and looked at the police officer, were you planning on hitting him? Just to go, where, where was your initial thought process? I didn't think it was going to be that really intense, just being judged by people that I see at school or I know from different places. They actually care what their peers think a little more than perhaps maybe a juvenile court judge. I feel like it would have been a lot easier if it had just been strangers, people that I'd never seen before and would never see again. We had the Chief Justice of California observe one of the trial court sessions and he said the kids were better than some of the lawyers who appeared in front of him over the years. I did a men's circle or an accountability circle. You to had men from the, the community in. Yeah, men from the community and we just talked about my situation and it was really an overall great experience. When we get to the face-to-face, and when the kid gets to hear how what he did impacted someone who's volunteering their time to be there, it's very powerful. She says, you know, um, there's a lot more to this that you don't see. And I was like, how so? Like, I'd like to know. She says, at the time that you were doing this, it may seem like a bad thing just to break into the store in general, but he was at home taking care of a sick kid, and he comes back and is getting chewed out by his boss. I would say 99% of the time, the kids go inward and they're able to reflect back and go, wow, I didn't realize. That, that hit me hard, I was, you know. When you throw a kid in the hall and they just sit there and they don't think about what they did wrong, they think about, like, wow, I can't believe this. Like, they get all fired up about everything. Our recidivist rate in youth courts generally runs about 3%, whereas the traditional system runs about 20 to 25%. If you actually give them things to help them change and make them want to be better, then it's, it's obviously the better alternative. And I think what's awesome about peer court is that you know that you're changing lives. You're getting to help somebody become a better person, and all you have to do is spend a couple hours with them, and that, that in itself is amazing. To watch this full episode, click the link in the description below. To watch other Immense Possibilities trailers, click the box on the left. And to help more Immense Possibilities happen, click the box on the right. Do what you can do. Thanks.